welcome back to the studio. And remember to click that follow button on the stream if you're enjoying what's going on. Before we go into that Exodus Ministry of Inappropriate Footwork match, we do have a bit of news from the other match, Pandemic Legion versus Iron Armada. Pandemic Legion did win fielding a Raven State issue. Yeah, so Crazy old school AT prize shit, probably worth trillions in ISK these days, piloted by Blue Melon, of course. Um, so really awesome match sad we missed that but we did see a really epic missile dps setup from in fact both teams Zutonia, what what did we see in that match so we saw exodus ban out both tech 2 armor logi but then they bought the augura which mm. is also an army logi but it's tech 1 which mm. was kind of interesting maybe trying to fake out the uh, ministry team mm. so they bought uh, two bar guests as well as the vigil crew and a few bombers and the Augur, the, the team that they bought was designed to sort of like single out ships and just kill mm -hmm. them straight away with those visual TPs, yeah. the crew will web stuff down, then the Bargus just do really high DPS while they have charges in the rapid heavy missile launchers. Mm -hmm. And then you also have like the bombers as well with the bonus TP, vigil, everything supplying. Mm. Uh, Ronald, we saw bursts there, TE1 Logi frigates. They had a little bit of popularity last year. Shadow Cartel, for example, made yeah. good use of them. What did you think of their effectiveness in this match? Do you think this was a solid comp to bring T1 Logi frigates with, or do you think it was a bit of a misplay by Myth? Um, I think it was more of a misplay by MIF because they probably thought, like, if they ban armor logies, well, Exodus has banned armor logies, and um, they thought that. Um, I mean, I've actually banned the Sletner and the Cerberus, so obviously they thought they were scared of uh, getting Alfred by the band, uh, from the from the Serb and the Sletner Alpha, probably bringing Artis and Rapid Light. So, honestly, I think this was a bit of a misplay by them, but um, they might be able to bring it back. They should um, maybe if they brought out the Tech Two Logi versions, the um, the Scalpel and the other one, the Calvary one, which I've been eluded by, but uh, Kieran, Kieran, that's the one. So if they maybe brought those, maybe brought some links as well. They did bring a stalk, but um, a stalk is limited to only having one, two, three links on it, depending on how many command processes you, you can put on them. But yeah, I think there's a bit of a misplay by MF, but Exodus played quite strongly. Yeah, control them. It's control no them. shame to lose to Exodus. Absolutely Came not. second last year, consistently make really deep runs in the tournament. Best of luck to Ministry in the losers bracket, which they'll be going to. Definitely. Nobody gets eliminated today. Just you drop into that loser bracket. It, it's, it's a slog. It's a true slog of games going up into the finals weekend if you make it all the way there from the losers bracket. But best of luck to them. Yeah. Uh, we saw there two very heavy missile teams, bombers. Vargas, uh, yeah. Fleet Foon, Golem, Suetonia. What do you think of uh, missiles as a weapon system in the tournament? Do you think we're going to see tons of missile spam this year? Or, I mean, we've had the introduction of guidance uh, computers and the tracking disruptors for missiles this year. Do you think that's going to play a big effect? How do you think missiles are going to compare to the way we saw them last year? I think missiles are going to be very big in this tournament, mostly because of the fact that drones are a lot weaker in this mm -hmm. tournament. We've also seen... Uh, Logistics drones are also a lot weaker now, and missile boats typically don't have big drone bays. Mm. So having those uh, remote repair drones yeah. in those missile ships is not as big a deal. They also apply very, very well. We also have discounted Blood Raider ships, which yes. are going to apply a lot of nuke pressure and a lot of webs as well. Missiles mm. don't rely on cap. They also have good ranges as well, so they're not going to get controlled by mm. crew wars or Balgorns as well yeah. as other typical turret ships might. Rello, you mentioned uh, when we were watching the max match that uh, Exodus bought something called Kingslayer. Do you want to elaborate possibly on what a Kingslayer setup is? Well, I can't elaborate too much well, because it's our setup, but basically you'd usually bring a, uh, bring a triple core, usually battleships, and it's usually a semi-all-in setup. Hmm. So it's usually, um, if one thing doesn't work, then the, the setup can sort of work. So it's like a semi-cheese setup if you can, hmm. if you sort of want to call it that way. But um, it's usually, if this doesn't work, we can, might be able to hold out type of setup. But um, usually if the, the primary doesn't, doesn't die or something goes wrong, then you, it's usually game over, but you can maybe you know, get back onto it. So. Yeah, and you have the hyena and the vehicles yeah, and the crew wars, all these really fast tackle ships and ships that uh, really amplify the damage that's coming in on the target. So it's really hard, hard for a logistic ship to get away and to mitigate damage, which it normally would with SIG. 
Yeah. So our next match this year is uh, going to be between Vidra Reloaded and Polar Bears. Polar Bears being my absolute favourite team this year. Brilliant alliance name to start with and watching them in the open practices, which you can watch on uh, Art J's Proving Games videos on YouTube's on the Eventy YouTube channel, which I'll quickly plug. Hey. Um, the Polar Bears team look really fun. They're a new face to the tournament, which is always nice to see new teams getting involved. But they are up against Vyadra, which to my knowledge is a Russian group led by uh, Lucy Liu. Is that correct, yeah, Tanya? Yeah, Lucy Liu, I Beast, and uh, I think Mika Noiser. Mm. All these people are really big in the Russian community. Mm. Uh, I believe uh, I Beast, or Lucy Liu as he's known as now, is uh, one of the people who used to do uh, Russian commentary streams. He used mm. to rebroadcast the AT and do it in Russian for uh, Russian viewers. He also, I believe, organised the Russian tournament on Singularity as well sometime last year, which was really big. Yeah. So he definitely knows his stuff. He's been part of the Gorgon Spawn and Dark Side teams. Yes. So yeah, Vydra, very strong team. Also has a few X elements from Hydra Reloaded as well. Mm -hmm. A few of the Russian pilots from there have moved into. Uh, yeah, the Russian Vydra. teams. There is a really strong representation from the Russian community in the Alliance tournament, which is awesome to see. You've got teams yeah, like yeah. uh, Vydra, you've got teams like the Afterlife as well, you've got teams from all over Europe, even like uh, Hun Reloaded as well. Yeah. Um, uh, White Legion is a French team, yeah, for example. French, yeah. um, so it's really yeah. great to see you know, all our friends uh, across the world playing the Alliance tournament, um, even if it's a bit of an early morning for some of yeah, the Americans. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, feel, I feel sorry for the Americans, they have to wake up at uh, extremely so, early time. So reload. Um, we've got Vydra versus Polar Bears. Yes. I think it's fair to say that Vydra are probably quite the, the heavy team. You know, maybe the heavyweights. Yeah, in this match. maybe they're the favourites to win this match. If you were on a kind of a new young team coming into the tournament, like Polar Bears are, and you are up against you know what the big people one. expect to be a tournament monster. Yeah. What do you think you would go for? Would you go for a massive all-in? Would you just bring your best comp? Like what? What do you think you can do to try and level the playing field? Um. Well, there's different ways of thinking about it. You can bring, you can bring maybe one, like the one or two comps that you're best at. You've been practicing like over and over, so like if one gets banned, you can bring the other. So you can practice those two comps, or you can bring maybe like a, a all, like a rushy all-in setup, which might catch them off guard. Because mm -hmm. um, obviously these uh, quite heavyweight, uh, heavyweight teams are usually thinking um, like they're going against other heavyweight teams, so mm -hmm. obviously they have the same mind. Like, but obviously. Maybe if uh, if it was a weak if it was a weaker team, obviously they have a different thinking path. So if maybe Vydra ban like maybe the uh, Guardian and Eros, mm -hmm. um, Polar Bears could bring like a, a like a rush all in with no logic, and it might really catch them off guard because they weren't expecting armor uh, like an armor ship. So um, I definitely think in this scenario it's better to just bring like an all in cheesy setup. Mm -hmm. That's that's how I would feel because if you bring like your really good solid standard comp. Um, Vydra or like a heavyweight team will just be like, well, we can just beat this. We've trained against this time and time again. It's just just another practice to them. So if you bring something cheesy and really all in, they might they might be catched off guard and they might actually lose. Yeah, you mentioned the bands there, and the bands are a big part of the tournament that I think a lot of people oh, yeah. um, don't really think about as much necessarily if they're new to the tournament scene. I mean, in, in previous years, one of the big uh, popular bands is to ban a Nero's Guardian or ban Scimitar Basilisk in order to just knock out a certain type of shield or armor tanking team. Definitely. Uh, last year, with the introduction of Tech 1 Logistics Frigates, we started seeing them, and so you couldn't really ban them through. And this year, we have the T2 Logistics Frigates, yeah. and we also have the removal of Tinkers due to the new remote uh, cap rules. So do you think that the T2 Logistics Frigates are going to affect the meta much or do you think they're going to be still quite niche? Um, what do you think they do in, in, in terms of banning? Do you still think that the uh, Tech 2 Logistics Cruiser bans are still as strong as they used to be or do you think that the T2 Logistics Frigates kind of counteract how strong that pair banning works? I think the Tech 2 Logistics Cruisers are still really strong. I think Tech 2 Logistics Frigates are more likely to replace Tech 1 Logistic Cruisers because they have mm. similar rep outputs almost the same but the big thing between the two tech 2 ones is they can rep each other mm. and they're much better against sort of sustained damage although the weakness of them is they have i think one third of the range of yeah, tech, yeah. Of I mean, tech the, one cruisers the optimal on a shield rep for yeah. i believe is under 10k maybe even under 5k um, so as I was saying, the next match is Vydra Reloaded versus Polar Bears. We will be joined once again by commentators Elise Randolph and Rain Chocolate, who've got up super early this morning yeah. to join us via the magic of the internet. We'll be going into that match. Uh, should be starting in just a couple minutes from now. So um, we saw big missile teams last match. Yeah. What other types of teams do you expect to see to be strong this year without giving potentially too much away from your own um, team's plans? 
Well, on the Bayes Proving Grounds, we saw, I think, Lucy Liu's team bring like a really strong Macarial setup. Ah, yeah. yeah. That was really fun to watch. And I think it smashed like a TFI core. Yeah, we even have, um, I, I believe it's the Laura Cords have a flagship Macarial, yeah, so they get to pimp out. I mean, I know that the Galente Militia guys that they're a part of really, really love their Macarials. Nidin, editor at Crossing Zebras, loves his Macarial, does a lot of artwork for it for the community. It's really, really fun. Um, so, yeah, we're just waiting to hear that the teams have come into the arena and we're getting to the match really soon. Mm -hmm. So, sorry, I've got someone talking to my ear. It's really distracting. What do you want me to discuss, Bay? <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, um, Sutonia, so, so talk to me a, a bit more about your thoughts on um, common flagships that we might see. So we've mentioned Macarial, we've mentioned um, the Balgorn, we've mentioned the SNI. Do you think there's any other really strong choices this year? Well, possibly Typhoon Fleet issue. Mm -hmm. Again, it's a solid ship. Normally they work best in pairs though, because they can use heavy armor rep bots on each other. Yeah, the TFI and Typhoon, or even Mimitar battleships in general, do have quite a large drone bay for not being a drone boat. Um, the TFI actually has, it can actually use five large drones and have spare um, spare bandwidth, while the normal t uh, normal Typhoon also has four, can use also four large drones. So they are they're quite strong because um, you can have this like large armor rep bot um, spam going, where you can just put all your rep bots on an era on your Aneros so and it will just tank. For days, basically. We also saw in that match uh, Tech One Logistics Cruisers being used, which is very, very unusual in an Alliance tournament match. Um, T2 Logistics obviously giving you more rep power, uh, more resists, better EHP. Why do you think that some teams would choose to use a T1 Logistics Cruiser over the T2? Well, they banned uh, Tech Two Armor Logi on the uh, Guardian. They bought the Augra, maybe that okay. sagged them out a bit, because I think that's why you saw the Slep known as Serb ban, because they thought, oh, yeah. Exodus are banning Armour Logi. They must be coming with this, like... Well, I'm going to have to cut you off there, because oh. I've just been told that we have to go straight to the arena, back to Elise <laughs> and Chocolate Rain. Sorry, bud.